back to the pol new police service please do send in your comments to our sms number 8040 or you can facebook us at ktn kenya or twitter us at ktn kenya with hashtag sunrise live what changes do you expect in the new police service is our question of the day we will sample your comments during our interview and speaking of that particular interview we're now joined in studio by uh, johnston kavuludi who's the chair of the national police service Commission and uh, of course Murshid Abdallah who's the commissioner who's a commissioner at uh, the National Police Service Commission thank you so much for joining us this morning thank you all right uh, we can start by talking about the mandate of the National Police Service Commission thank you um, the National Police Service Commission has uh, one of the widest mandates mm -hmm. uh, any of the commissions um, we have currently the National Police Service Commission has the mandate to take overall charge of the National Police Service. This includes the recruitment, appointment, promotion, transfers, mm -hmm. discipline, and even dismissal of uh, police officers serving in the, in the National Police Service. Mm -hmm. The Commission also has the mandate to make rules, regulations, uh, that guide the entire police service. The National Police Service Commission also monitors mm -hmm. the entire performance of the service with a view to ensuring that it is effective and efficient in the manner in which it exercises its responsibility in keeping Kenya safe and secure. Right. There are many other aspects that we are involved in, including advising the government on all matters that relate to security mm -hmm and where the police should be taking uh, the charge. All right, such a, such a handful of duties and tasks that have been given to your particular commission. Do you feel that, that you're well equipped to, to do so? Maybe Abdallah, you could take us through that. Um, the commission is, uh, is up to speed mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, we know exactly how the Katiba was wired to ensure that there are meaningful reforms in the service. Uh, in a broad canvas, our task is to actually move the police from a force into a service. Mm -hmm. And to do that, uh, we have to deal with hard issues as well as soft issues. Mm -hmm. Part of the soft issues is uh, training and orientation. And we need to look at the overall syllabus of uh, the kind of training which the police have been exposed to so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, to try and uh, to bring in a lot of innovative ideas into how the police ought to be carrying out its functions mm -hmm. to the expectations of a modern democracy. The way the police has been wired so far is, is in, in the framework of a colonial relic <laughs> where you actually try to work for the executive but not for the sovereignty of the people of Kenya. Okay. And briefly that is what we are trying to reassert. All right, and w let's talk about the differences between the police commission back then and this, the, the new that uh, the new <coughs> commission that so many Kenyans are now trusting to, you know, get that service out there. What are the main ch uh, differences? Well, um, in the first place, there's never been a police service commission. Mm -hmm. This is the first time uh, a police service commission is in place and is uh, established under the current constitution. Mm -hmm. Uh, prior to that, uh, the police was under the management of the Public Service Commission. And as you are aware, the Public Service Commission takes charge of the entire public service. Mm -hmm. And so the police was not so adequately catered for. Mm -hmm. As it is now, the National Police Service Commission has taken the responsibility of that management. It is therefore expected, and we are doing it, that uh, we will make all those reforms which are necessary in a modern economy mm -hmm. uh, and which, the, which is in conformity with what applies uh, throughout the world. Now, um, prior to the establishment of this commission, um, the commission of police then, because we no longer have a commission of police, mm -hmm. was uh, really the overall, and he made decisions, some of which were really um, far-reaching mm -hmm. as an individual. Um, there wasn't, uh, so to speak, an organization or a body of government like the commission now that uh, will regulate the performance of the commissioner. Mm -hmm. Now, today, 
we have an inspector general who is in charge of the police command. Mm -hmm. And the inspector general is um, an ex-official member of the National Police Service Commission. The same way uh, the two deputies uh, of the inspector general are members of the National Police Service Commission, again, as ex-official members, because they do not carry a vote mm -hmm. when it comes to decision making. So in a sense, they give technical advice to the commission. Now, decisions of the National Police Service Commission cannot be dictated by any other person considering our independence. We make the decisions, provided the decisions are lawful and in accordance with what the Constitution provides and in consistence with the, the, the provisions of the enabling legislation. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking about the National Police Service Commission Act, which stipulates what it is that uh, the Commission is mandated to do, and also the National Police Service Act. Mm -hmm. So these are what really guide us in the performance of our work. And I want to say that uh, um, for a long time, the, the police were under the guidance, the direct uh, um, instruction of the office of the president. That is no longer the case. Mm -hmm because the National Police Service Commission has taken effective charge. All right. All right Mushid, Mushid what, what will the independence of the Police Service Commission, what, what is the impact that it will have in policing Kenya? Uh, you see, uh, le, le, if, if we are to go back to how things were under the, the Katiba which we divorced, mm -hmm. is that uh, the police service was not an independent institution. Mm -hmm. It could take orders from uh, the political class. Mm -hmm. It took orders from the executive, and it, it also took orders outside the command structure to well-connected business persons. Now, with a collapsed command structure of that nature, you cannot get uh, the kind of service that Kenyans are supposed to get. Mm -hmm. What this new constitution has done, actually the current constitution yes. has done, it has, it has uh, made the institution of the Inspector General independent. And he is supposed, because it's a he now, <laughs> to exercise independent command over the police service. He is not supposed to take any orders from the executive or from any other person outside the command structure. Mm -hmm. The relationship between the police command or the police service and the National Police Service Commission is one of oversight. Mm -hmm. We are to set the policy, the policy framework, and then they are supposed to implement it, but at the same time, even in terms of, of their actions, even in terms of their command, they are subject to a civilian oversight authority, the principle of which is the National Police Service Commission. Mm -hmm. We also have another civilian oversight authority, that is the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, mm -hmm. but their mandate is largely confined to receiving complaints from the public against police officers. They're supposed to do certain investigations to verify that one. But then once they're done with that, uh, with that task, mm -hmm. they can't do anything further. They have to submit their findings to the Police Service Commission mm -hmm. where after we are to take the necessary action as we may deem fit according to the parameters of the law. So what is there is a paradigm shift from a position whereby the police service was subservient to forces outside the police mm -hmm to a service now which is independent and, and the independence is shielded by the working of this commission. Mm -hmm. Yes, Indeed. And uh, we are heading to, to an electioneering period, a moment that is going to be very crucial, especially uh, uh, in terms of safety and in, in, in terms of uh, making sure that Kenya is secure generally. I mean, what is that independence? What, is, what will be the impact of that independence of the Police Service Commission as we head to the elections? Now, as you'll recall, in 2007, um, after the elections, mm -hmm. we had serious security issues, and um, Kenyans suffered greatly. And they did so mainly because uh, we did not have an independent command mm -hmm. of the, the police service. Now, what we are ensuring, and that the Inspector General is very close to, is that the police make adequate preparations for the safety and security, not just of um, polling stations, mm -hmm. but also Kenyans who desire to vote. It is also imperative that uh, the National Police Service be prepared in case 
anything arises that threatens peace and security mm -hmm. during the time of elections. Mm -hmm. Already, I'm sure the public knows that um, the Inspector General, whom we are not speaking on behalf of, but knowing that he's a member of the National Police Service Commission and he briefs us on a regular basis, mm -hmm. has arranged for who will man what polling station mm -hmm. and who will take care of um, the tiling centers in each of those uh, constituencies and who will take charge of the National Tiling Center. And there is need for everybody to get to know that uh, the police are quite a lot mm -hmm. right now to ensure that um, there is no repeat of 2007 stock 2008 skirmishes that almost plunged this country into total darkness. Okay. Mm. All right. And uh, looking at the police force itself, is it, is it equipped enough? <coughs> Do we have enough resources such that, like you said, all the polling centers will be manned? Do we have that capacity? Um, what is really important about uh, manning um, you know, polling stations is that we have adequate personnel, mm -hmm. the presence of police, to be able to exercise you know, crowd control um, in a manner that uh, it is not possible for anybody to break the law with impunity. Mm -hmm. We do not need all those sophisticated equipment, guns and so forth, mm -hmm. to be on the ready, uh, because Kenyans uh, are generally given to being peaceful people. So it is really to keep public order during those elections. And uh, I, I think we are confident as a commission that uh, we have what it takes to ensure that we have peaceful elections. Uh, in, in, the, in the next few days no. when we have those elections arrive. Just, just to dwell on that a bit, I mean, Kenyans are indeed peaceful people, but of course we have <coughs> the, the kinds of uh, crowds like that you're talking about and people who, you know, peace to them is not really a priority, so mm. to speak. And of course there's that time that, that will come that probably the police will need the sophisticated uh, uh, machinery, so to speak. W will that be in place in, in case there's, we have riots and, you know, violent riots to just protect um, other civilians? Well, we are confident uh, because uh, the Inspector General actually since his appointment he has been focusing mm -hmm. on how to ensure that uh, we don't have a situation that threatens peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is adequate preparation um, and you can be sure that um, we will ensure that the police keep the, pa the peace during that time. Mm -hmm. um, you see, what it essentially takes also is for Kenyans to understand that uh, by themselves, the police cannot keep the peace. Mm -hmm. They too have a heavy responsibility in, first of all, reporting what is likely to jeopardize the peace during the time of elections. We also have administrative officers. Mm -hmm. We're talking about chiefs, the assistants, we're talking about DCs, we're talking about DOs. All these people are mobilized for purposes of ensuring that uh, the elections are peaceful. Mm -hmm. So it goes beyond the police. Okay. The police are a part of the process of ensuring that peace. All right. Murshid, I mean, Kenyans are, are used to the police, uh, the police commission or service rather as it is. What is the commission going to do to just make sure that Kenyans see that difference between your commission and the previous institution that was there? Yeah, actually there was no institution or other commission which was there mm -hmm. previously. Well, you're right about the institution. Mm -hmm. There was the office of the president. Yes. But uh, the, the real difference this time around is that we do have a game changer in place. Mm -hmm and the game changes the constitution. Mm -hmm. The constitution makes sure that the police have to operate independently mm -hmm. and they are not under the whims and fences or control of anyone. You must also realize that uh, there was one arm of the police which was the administration police and the administration police <coughs> was a tool which was used during colonial times mm -hmm. for the purposes of keeping very tight control over the citizenry. And uh, when independence came, we did not make any paradigm shift as to the use of that kind of institution. And that was also the bone of contention in the entire provisional administration structure. Mm -hmm. Provisional administration got its teeth from the armed branch of, of the officers, which is the provisional administration police. Right now, what the constitution has done is, number one, it has done away with the provincial administration structure. It was not working for Kenyans. And along with it, uh, the provincial administration police have to be now taken over 
by the mainstream national police service mm -hmm. and uh, the command structure now we don't have any more duality between uh, the, the Kenya police service or the so-called regular police and the administration police service. Mm -hmm. They've come under one central command and that is of the Inspector General of Police. So we do not expect Kenyans to feel any fear now that administrators who are wired to the centre mm -hmm. can now take any decisions in terms of commanding and moving police officers the way they would, they would have liked to move. It's one about perceptions. Even then, there was a perception that uh, there was a, a, a concerted effort to make the elections go one way or the other. Uh, there cannot conceivably be any such perceptions anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's a multi-pronged effort in which you, we can assuage the fears of Kenyans mm -hmm. that these coming elections, it's not going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. It's going to be business as it is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that is to have safe, peace, and secure elections. And a police service which is not partisan. Indeed, it has been a short stint for us in office. But uh, I think we, d we are making very meaningful sea changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for police officers who think that they can act outside the boundaries of the constitution and the law, they are in for a big shock. Right. And uh, with a revamped judiciary, mm -hmm. the, uh, the action will be taken pretty fast. Mm, indeed. Yes. Uh, and talking about training, Mr. Kavuludi, you, you talked about training being one of the mandates of the new Police Service Commission. Will our officers who are already in service be, uh, go through this training in terms of handling issues in a new way? Um, the development of any service to make it efficient and effective mm -hmm. depends on the extent to which officers in that service continually receive training so that they are equipped to handle the latest situations that may not have been envisaged and the changes that society has brought uh, within you know, the functioning of any organization. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you're aware that uh, you, may be, you may not be aware, but uh, Police officers now undertake a basic training of 15 months. Mm -hmm. But those who are intended to be carrying out uh, senior administrative work will go back and be trained for higher level management. Mm -hmm. Now, currently, officers who are in the service are being equipped with further skills. By having to go back to train, they are selected deliberately, specifically, mm -hmm. to handle the specialized functions that they need um, extra training in so that uh, they be better managers. Mm -hmm. This includes you know, officers across board, whether they are managing traffic, they are managing crime, it is imperative that they be trained. So one of the things that has been done is uh, a curriculum being developed mm -hmm. for purposes of handling the various facets within policing, where advanced knowledge, advanced information can also be passed across, new skills and new competences are gained by those police officers. Mm -hmm. um, about two days ago, um, the Inspector General and myself were closing a course that is uh, organized jointly by the Jomo Kenyatta University College, I mean, Jomo Kenyatta University mm -hmm. uh, of Agriculture and Technology uh, in policing. So here we had the senior police officers who are taking uh, credit um, you know, uh, classes mm -hmm. that will enable them eventually acquire either diploma or degree in, in policing in science. Mm -hmm. Now, these are some of the programs that are being developed by the National Police Service uh, Commission in conjunction with the universities and other institutions of learning to update the skills of officers so that they are not left behind when it comes to uh, public sector management. Mm -hmm. Now, and it goes beyond that. For police officers to be considered to be functioning within the current environment, we also go back to the law. The parliament already has reduced the ranking structure. Mm -hmm. And this is important because uh, when we, think we are thinking about training, we are thinking about training for specific skills, mm -hmm. for specific you know, operations. So that uh, from 16 ranks, which used to exist from uh, constable mm -hmm. all the way to the commission of police at that time, we now are talking about just 11 ranks mm -hmm. which have been um, gazetted. Mm -hmm. They are part of the National Police Service uh, Act. And uh, this is very useful 
because it creates um, a command structure that ensures there is easier communication mm -hmm. from the top all the way down. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just would like to let the public know that uh, uh, in the course of this week, and even possibly today, mm -hmm. this commission is set to unveil some of the policy decisions that this commission has been working on mm -hmm. for the last three months that show distinctly that we are in the process of carrying out reform. Mm -hmm. For the information of the public, from today, there does not exist an officer within the police service bearing uh, the title of assistant commissioner, mm -hmm. deputy commissioner, or anything of the like. Mm -hmm. And we say so out of uh, appreciation that uh, as we stand today, the National Police Service Commission is complete mm -hmm. by the appointment of the Inspector General mm -hmm. and the two Deputy Inspectors General who join the Police Service Commission. Mm -hmm. Now, and therefore, following to that and making it more efficient for the Inspector General to function, mm -hmm. we have provided for a structure that will make it um, very efficient. Mm -hmm. These ranks have now been collapsed. The rank of Senior Deputy Commissioner of Police, one. Senior Deputy Commissioner of Police, two. Deputy Commissioner of Police, mm -hmm. Senior Assistant Commissioner of Police, Assistant Commissioner of Police, they do not exist from today. Okay. So they are now effectively referred to as Assistant Inspector General. Mm -hmm. And we shall have officers appointed in an acting capacity to be assistant inspectors general of police mm -hmm. and we shall deploy them appropriately. Okay. This is in an effort to ensure that we do not breach the law mm -hmm. which allows the commission to carry out changes in the service for purposes of eff effecting efficiency. Mm -hmm. So when we now come to training, the officers will receive further training mm -hmm. that are specific to the new responsibilities mm -hmm. and the, the command structure that we now have in place. All right, just, just staying with, uh, with the changes, what do you hope to achieve from that? Is it to, to, to reduce the, 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 the bureaucracy probably that was there before? That's the most important aspect. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Ransley um, task force was very clear that uh, we have such a bureaucratic structure mm -hmm. that makes uh, um, the, the operation of the police um, really stifled by the fact that when instructions are handed down all the way, by the time it gets to the bottom, mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, the, the, the things have happened, including um, the information and the actions to be taken not being as precise as they should be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, today, the world over, Organizations have what we call flat organization structures. Yes. No bureaucracy leading to loss of information and lack of uh, a proper coordination. So that is one of those things mm -hmm. that need, needed uh, to come out. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you have greater efficiency because communication process is easier, it is smoother, it is much more meaningful. All right. What impact will that have, Murshid, when if I'm, I'm a citizen and I have a problem, it's going to probably be easier to get to the person who I'm supposed to, who's supposed to help me. I don't, uh, I don't think you need to look at that. We're mm -hmm. making it easier for you. Mm -hmm. We are going to la launch a product mm -hmm. which is ICT based, which runs on mobile technology. Mm -hmm. We know we are the vanguards of the technology surrounding mobile phones with the M-Pesa. Yes. What we have crafted is uh, a menu like the M-Pesa one, mm -hmm. where several options come to you the moment you enter into it. And uh, you, are, you are enabled mm -hmm. to choose a menu of reports. One should be a crime watch. If you see people doing gun running, mm -hmm. collecting pangas and all that, mm -hmm. even in your small village, you can text that, that whatever you, you are witnessing mm -hmm. and send it to a dedicated number. It will come to the police command so that action can be taken. Right. You don't have to search for a police station for you to do that. Mm -hmm. another, another aspect is uh, uh, gen uh, issues that surrounding gender and children. So many rape cases around, so many illegalities and atrocities against women. You can text using the correct menu. Mm -hmm. It will go 
to the police command, it should also go to the gender commission. And we are sure that something is going to be done because I think we've had all what those... What I can assure you yes. about is that we have a monitoring tool now to mm -hmm. see that something is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also affords us a, a serious statistics in trying to see where and how do these crimes happen. It is also a wonderful tool in terms of data collection for the, criminal, uh, the Directorate of Criminal Investigation, mm -hmm. whose first task now is to act proactively in collecting evidence and then mm -hmm. putting the evidence and not collecting evidence, but rather to collect intelligence. Mm -hmm. And policing must be intelligence-led. We lost it when we, when we lost the special branch, mm -hmm. thinking that NSIS, for instance, is a replacement of that. NSIS is bigger, now called NIS, mm -hmm. than mere police intelligence. There will be a menu about hate speech. So if you think you're in your dark corner mm -hmm. or in your, in, in your, in your, in your, you're doing your blogging mm -hmm. and you think eyes are not after you, you're mistaken because anyone can punch that number and that hate speech gets reported. Mm -hmm. And we know Mr. Kibunja is very alert on that one. Yeah. So we have a cocktail mm -hmm. of uh, ICT uh, which we are likely to launch tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, so that citizens around the country are able to report hate speech, election offenses, rape cases, corruption cases, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really an awesome tool and mm -hmm. it is the first one in, in its world. Mm -hmm. So this is what the commission has in store. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, 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 for the people who have a lot of faith in it. Yes. All right. All right. Indeed. Uh, let me just take this uh, opportunity to repeat uh, the question of the day. And we are asking what changes do you expect to see in the new uh, Police Service Commission? What changes do you want to see in the new Service Commission? I'm already seeing uh, a number of uh, messages. We'll be, uh, I'll be sharing them with, the, with our guests in just a short while. But just before we get to that, let's talk about the welfare of the police officers that has always been an issue you know the houses they stay in the kind of pay that they get what is the Commission going to do to look into this uh, thank you um, you know when we talk about reforms mm -hmm. many Kenyans may be thinking that uh, it's only the police officer that will be subjected to a process that ensures that she or he performs better mm -hmm. and is more responsive to the citizenry mm -hmm. But I want to say, for the police officer to be responsive to their duties and love to do what work they're carrying out, they need to be well taken mm -hmm. care of yes. as other employees in the public sector or private sector. Yes. It has been very depressing, first of all, when you think about mm -hmm. the police officer, uh, even if we're not talking about how much money they earn, mm -hmm. but their conditions of work, where they live, mm -hmm. what happens when they're involved in accidents, mm -hmm. And these are matters that the Police Service Commission is already drafting mm -hmm. uh, proposals mm -hmm. so that they are presented for purposes of budgeting and ensuring that the police officer is better housed. Mm -hmm. We like to have a situation where a police officer and his or her family mm -hmm. live in a manner that is clearly what makes them feel that they are also part of this society. Mm -hmm. Not the condition where two police officers share one cubicle, separated by a thin curtain, and each one of them is a representative mm -hmm. of a home. Last week, the commission, because it's part of our responsibility, visited a number of police stations. Mm -hmm. And one of those that struck us is the Kikuyu police station, which is just a stone throw away from Nairobi. And the kind of housing conditions we came across told us that we have a monumental task mm -hmm. in ensuring that the Kenyan police officer is better housed. Um, if we have to inspire confidence in them, if we have to make them like their job. So we'll come up with a housing program that will ensure police officers are better housed. Mm -hmm. Or better still, if there are no houses we, that are government uh, owned, mm -hmm. uh, then we have uh, the possibility of officers renting houses like other public servants so that they can pay, be paid house allowance mm -hmm. provided arrangements are made such that when exigencies arise they are able to appear on duty when they are required. Secondly, we have their pay of course. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility of this commission to work together with the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to have better pay for police officers so that they are very close mm -hmm. or they resemble 
what happens, for example, with the officers in the KDF. There should be no reason why there should be major differences mm -hmm. between the, those two, you know, two services. We also would like to ensure that police officers, their social security protection is among those that inspire our confidence in them. We'll want his son or my son mm -hmm. or your own or even yourself mm -hmm. to like the fact that you can join the police service because you know in the event of an accident, there is an insurance program that will take care of you. In the event that somebody dies, mm -hmm. then it is compensation that will be adequate. There are many other aspects. It is this that will inspire more people to like to join the police service, mm -hmm. stay them, keep them away from uh, what we normally see as corruption. Because some of the ways by which a police officer is lured into corrupt practices is to try and make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Indeed. How soon are we, are, we, are we going to see these changes? Because they have been staying in these hot houses for <coughs> such a long time. But how soon are we likely to see all these good things happen to, we, to them? Yeah, We've we, we just been in office for slightly under four months. Yes. And one of the things is to come up with the policies which we are drafting. And these policies are what will lead us towards ensuring that each facet of improvement of terms and conditions of police is given uh, its due attention. Mm -hmm. So we will say that uh, by the time we are in office in the next six months, we should be able to unveil plans, for example, in housing, because mm -hmm. that one is fairly easy to do. And we would like to collaborate with other agencies that can assist us in housing our police officers better. We would like to have in place a social security protection program. Those two are of, of prime importance. Mm -hmm. And so it won't take a long time. As soon as we finish, we'll be able to discuss with the police officers. They too should be involved. And they should feel that it is their own program, not one that is being given to them, mm -hmm. but one where they negotiate with us, where we discuss together using their police associations, and we are able to arrive at what they consider fair and suitable to them. All right. Commissioner Murshid, uh, le let's talk about the police stations themselves. I was doing my research, and I, ca I came across... Dandora police station. I, I hope I'm right on that, uh, on the name. And it was a hut and there was only sort of like a cardboard that was separating where the, the females and the males were. And of course that could have serious implications. You, you have criminals, so to speak, or suspected criminals on each side. I mean, what are you hoping to do with, with the police stations? Another one was under a tree and uh, that is in Turkana. What are you hoping to do with the police stations? I would rather not call them police stations. Mm -hmm. They are nothing near police stations. Okay. They are terrible and even the good ones there's not a single police station in this republic worth the name of a proper police station in my thinking which is the commission's thinking mm -hmm. uh, for us the police station ought to be the service delivery unit where you go as a citizen and get the service you deserve uh, the way the police station is even laid out, the way it is planned from within, that's, that's not the place you'll go to get service. Mm -hmm. That is the place you really go and look at uh, and, and, and you can imagine uh, the collectivity of, uh, of, the, of, of, of any kind of atrocity comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. We have been again to Kikui police station where we feel that and that should be a replica, uh, a replica of many police stations. Uh, even the holding facility for people who are suspected mm -hmm. to have committed any crimes so that is so dehumanizing yes we don't have any place where you can go for 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 for, for your calls for instance uh, there are no separators where you can separate uh, people who are minors mm -hmm. from people who could be hardcore criminals mm -hmm. uh, there is no reason why we should have police stations the way we do if you look at it beyond that, you'll see every policeman is like a scrapyard. Every police station is like a scrapyard. Yes. Uh, and then they tell you that this, these are caught in for evidence purposes. Clearly that, that junk has mm -hmm. been there for the last 30 years. Yes. And there cannot conceivably be any evidentiary value in that. We should just pile them and throw them in the scrapyard, sell them off, buy computers and fix them in the police stations. Mm -hmm. But coming back to what you're saying, the police station in terms of an infrastructure is not sufficient or even geared towards the, the services which we are supposed to get. Mm -hmm. uh, through the assistance of the Swedish government, we are coming up with a model police station and how a proper facility should look like. And uh, they are, we, it is at an advanced stage and uh, that is the way we would like to go. We would like to see uh, 
throughout the country, proper police stations being put, and uh, security needs around the country are not the same, and mm -hmm. that's why we have counties in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep uh, being very innovative and make sure that the police stations are geared to, to, to the kind of environment in which they are situated. All right. Clearly, I, I agree with you. <laughs> Th those are not they police stations. They still have stations. typewriters. <laughs> uh, if, if, even those typewriters, I don't think they work. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, let's deviate just a bit and look into the commission itself. There has been a tug of war into the appointments of the deputies of the police inspector general. Of course, uh, Prime Minister Raila Odinga rejected the names that uh, Kibaki appointed. Uh, what is your take on this? The National Police Service Commission has the responsibility to advertise, to interview, mm -hmm. and to recommend three persons for each position. The position of Inspector General, the two deputies, and also the Director of Criminal Investigations. Mm -hmm. The Commission was satisfied that the job was well done. Mm -hmm. We did it. We recommended names of persons we considered competent, mm -hmm. qualified, and they had the requisite integrity mm -hmm. for the President mm -hmm. to consider in consultation with the Prime Minister yes. to appoint. This should have taken place seven days after we submitted those names mm -hmm. to the President. All right. It's coming to the third month since we submitted. So one thing is clear, before the appointment which happened last week, the law had been bro broken because it should have happened within seven days. But again, it is not our responsibility to push that uh, it should have happened within that time because the law spe spe specifically stipulates so. Now, whatever other controversy arises today between His Excellency the President and the Right Honorable Prime Minister is a matter that is political. Mm -hmm. But we did what we considered proper, suitable, fair, and any of those three names in each category constituted persons who were appointable, and therefore there shouldn't have been any controversy unless other political considerations dictated so. That is our position as a commission. So, so what is the way forward? You will stick by, by the names that you, that you presented? The commission stands by the names presented because we did what we considered a thorough job. Mm -hmm. We interviewed those persons where integrity issues were raised. The commission recalled mm -hmm. some of those persons mm -hmm. where there were people accusing them of any impropriety. Mm -hmm. We called on those people to appear before the commission and we looked thoroughly at each of the allegations which were made and we specifically wrote a letter to the office of the president to indicate our position as a commission that we think we did the right thing. However, any Kenyan has the right to petition the president or the prime minister on any issue that they consider was not um, taken care of. But we still consider that uh, if we were asked to repeat the same interviews mm -hmm. and we have the same people, we'll arrive at the same results. Okay. All right. Motion to answer. On, uh, answer. Riding on the back of that mm -hmm. is that the beauty of the new dispensation is the way in which there are checks and balances to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, to begin with, the process itself was a process of checks and balances whereby there was no single authority mm -hmm. which could pick and choose and give to the public whatever they wanted to give. Uh, by and large, we did our best, and uh, there was a cocktail of names. Mm -hmm. There are three names for every position, and if issues are being raised about any particular one, I think uh, the principals also had the responsibility mm -hmm. of looking out and coming with a compromised uh, solution whereby they can put what they consider to be better able, keeping in mind the regional, ethnic, and uh, gen gender balance. But even after this exercise and the way it has reached today, uh, once we've done that, it's out of our hands. And we can't say that we are angels or we cannot make any mistakes. But uh, it's not lost in the sense that even any citizen now can intervene. The courts are wide open. They can take uh, 
matters there and uh, it's 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 a new court mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Mr. Willie Mutunga is there uh, with very sharp eyes. Mm -hmm. Another th other than that, there is also our own vetting which is on its way. Mm -hmm. We are going to, we are putting up a, a, a vetting tool like, like, uh, like it has never seen before. Yes. And uh, th there will be more time to do investigations, uh, there will be more time for public inquiries, and I can tell you it will be easier to pass an, uh, uh, the proverbial camel mm -hmm. through the eye of the needle than to have in the police service, like indeed in any, any public service, persons with suspect integrity. So it's not like uh, the, the end is nigh. We, we still have uh, several procedures to take place, and it's not true to say that. Once the IG is in place and the deputies are in place mm -hmm. and any other functionary is in place, that uh, the, it's the end to the integrity test. It's mm -hmm. an ongoing process. Anytime anybody slips up, mm -hmm. we are there to interdict, investigate, and take necessary action. So I, I, I would say what was most important was the institutions to come in place because without those institutions of the IG and the deputies and the new directorship, we weren't going anywhere with police reforms. And you see, it's, it's always a very difficult task. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. You're coming from an era where it's a, it's a Mercedes-Benz body with a tuk-tuk engine. Yes. Now we need to replace that engine with something stronger. And if you, even if you try to inject a very sick person suddenly to make him upright, you'll actually kill him off. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are like any other institution, an institution which is breaking in. We are fighting forces of the status quo. Everybody is doing that. So let us not imagine that this was an easy exercise or it was going to be a perfect one. Mm -hmm. But yes, we need to aim there. And uh, there are institutions and processes in place where we, uh, we, are, we, 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 can, we can actually get to where we would like to get. All that right. is my take on that one, yes. All right. Well, finally, during the primaries that were just about two weeks ago, we had 66,000 officers deployed uh, to, to, to various areas. What were the lessons that the Chio Commission learnt on that in regard to our this coming general election? Well, w w one of the things is that um, um, we need to be prepared. Um, there could be surprises, even in places which are not considered hot spots. Mm -hmm. So the police need to be prepared, they need to be alert. And that uh, we should not take for granted that um, the, 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 if places <coughs> have been um, you know, peaceful during elections, they'll end up being equally peaceful. Mm -hmm. Then we also learned the lesson as a commission, and I think this is a matter that uh, we see uh, receiving very active attention from the Inspector General and mm -hmm. uh, his staff, that for any um, area to be considered secure, even the persons who are involved, including the candidates and the parties, need to have uh, rules that they, they will have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that uh, the Electoral Commission, working with the Inspector General, have in place what it takes and that they needs to be observed by the candidates and their agents, all those persons that support them when it comes to ensuring that they follow the rules and they keep the peace. Mm -hmm. So those are lessons which are important. And also that at the end of the day, Kenyans still remain part of the same communities where they live and work. So it is imperative upon us to remain so much alert. Mm -hmm. That's what is important. Um, I don't know what my colleagues... Is will there a to specific add. number of officers that you are expecting to deploy in different parts of the country? Um, yes, there, is a, there are specific numbers. Again, we will not go into details as um, the National Police Service Commission mm -hmm. because uh, if you look at um, our functions, matters of uh, operations are the responsibility of the Inspector General. The Inspector General only undertakes to brief the National Police Service Commission on the actions he intends to take. And it's our job to monitor the performance of those officers. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the operational matters, how many he'll put where, uh, how they will operate, we normally will not want to interfere. And the law specifically says so. Mm -hmm. We cannot give him instructions on how he should be carrying out his work. Uh, he only briefs us. Right. And that bit of it he has done, and we are satisfied that 
um, learning from those lessons and looking into the future, um, all is going to be well. Okay. I just want to add one thing that you may not have asked and which we consider important as a commission uh, to let the public know. And that's that uh, while we have uh, uh, been interviewing officers for the top positions, and while we have now collapsed the ranks into you know, those which make the organization structure mm -hmm. flat, there is still one more activity which is so important. And that undertaking is vetting of all police officers. Mm -hmm. Some people may get surprised to hear that even those currently appointed, and the Commissioner Murshid alluded to it, we still are yet to give them the necessary vetting that will con determine their continued suitability mm -hmm. to serve cross board from the top all the way to the bottom. So it is that process when it is completed that will say that reform aspect where we are saving police officers who need to be in the service mm -hmm. and those who need not be in the service or those who should be at certain levels or who should be properly placed and when that exercise is completed, we'll be happy to have done one component of the reform process. What are the guidelines that you will use into sieving out the, uh, the, the good and the bad? Well, there are many, many aspects that we already have put down. Number one, police officers must be of good education. Mm -hmm. They must be properly qualified. And for them to competitively move up, we want to see police officers that show initiative that they're changing and they are keeping abreast with the demands of a modern uh, police service. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the integrity, and that comes in uh, because we look at their files, we consider what the public are telling us about them. We are looking at the ability to change, right? Since the change management process is really what transforming any service is all about. Those parameters, plus others that look at the individual and the possibility of those officers making changes where they live and work mm -hmm. are some of those that we consider important and which we shall apply. All right. C Commissioner Murshid, anything you want to wind us up with? Uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, we may start looking forward to, to, to developing the county structure of mm -hmm. command mm -hmm. for the police. Right now we have the PPOs, pr uh, Provincial Police Officers. Mm -hmm. The first word provincial does not exist exactly. anymore. We don't have provinces. And uh, keeping uh, the entire country under the command structure of a few officers may not be the best thing uh, that we should do, especially because the law does not recognize provinces anymore. What we need to look at is devol uh, devolution of services to the units, and uh, we see no reason absolutely why. Mm -hmm. We should not do away with the provincial police officer. Imagine a police officer in charge of an entire province like uh, Rift Valley, Eastern, or indeed any other province, perhaps other than Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But then, this is something which is in the, in the oven. It will come out very soon. Okay. And uh, we, we, we are going to fix responsibility to, to those in charge of the counties, mm -hmm. uh, very close to them. And uh, it's going to be easier to manage policing if they have a smaller area of jurisdiction to look for smaller demands, uh, very sharp uh, focusing on what should go on there. Mm -hmm. And we are going to replicate what is on the national side where we have the IG and two inspector generals in charge of each division of the service, AP and, OP, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, the Kenya Police Service. Mm -hmm. Out there we should also have a county commander mm -hmm. Uh, who is the overall in charge of both the Kenya Police Service and uh, the Administration Police Service who do distinct duties. Everything needs to be bottoms up and uh, uh, needs and requirements ought to be located down there. So I think uh, my chairman uh, mm -hmm. uh, didn't get the opportunity. The question sort of came to me, mm -hmm. but let's look forward to that structure very, very soon. We cannot still get stuck okay. into a provincial structure, yes. Oh, all right, and I think it's only right that we take at least one question from our, from our viewers. And he's asking, how will you make sure that all these changes that are at the top will resonate where we are? Chairman, take that one for <laughs> us. <laughs> well, well um, when changes are made at the top, it is normally with a view to the top influencing performance at the lower levels. Mm -hmm. We as a commission have the responsibility to supervise the entire police service. And as Commissioner Murshid has pointed out, other than 
the top command structure. We're thinking about the county as a unit of policing. And we have a county policing authority. Mm -hmm. We have regulations which are soon coming into force. We have rules that will apply, and those rules will be applied across board. And the, the county commander, for instance, will have the responsibility of managing police services within that county. Mm -hmm. So that you can see it is not that it is coming from the top to the county commander. The county commander already has what it takes. This is what I'm looking for. This is how I'm expected to manage my county. I have a responsibility to the, the, civil, the civilian authority at the county, which also oversees uh, policing in that county. And then the county commander reports directly to the, the, the deputy inspector general, mm -hmm. either in charge of the administration police mm -hmm. or the Kenya police, or directly to the director of criminal uh, investigation. Mm -hmm who then also reports upwards. But you see, so that that is broken down, it is the unit where one operates as a commander, mm -hmm. or the officer in charge, having what it takes, they have their men, they know what they are expected okay. to carry out. Mm -hmm. This will arise after each one of them will have the responsibilities spelled out. Indeed, we are not beginning from a clean slate. The Ransley Commission came up with what it takes, what has to apply at every level. Mm -hmm. The Naikoni Task Force, which came up to give us how to implement this, already has the roadmap done for us. Mm -hmm. So as a commission, our job is actually to just put it out as our regulations and <coughs> ensure that it is working. Mm -hmm. And we monitor, because the best thing about this is that the National Police Service Commission, which is a permanent commission, will on a daily basis, monitor the performance, and we need not do it directly through the Inspector General. Mm -hmm. We can do it directly with a police station, a police post, at the, the level of um, the, the, the commander in charge of a county, or in charge of any unit, because mm -hmm. that is part of our responsibility. And when it comes to other aspects of monitoring, we are empowered to carry out any inquiries public inquiries, receive information and views from members of the public, which we will take into consideration so that when we go out for purposes of inspecting police stations to ensure the efficiency, mm -hmm. the effectiveness, and that the people are being treated properly, we have what Wananchi have told us about how they like policing to be carried out. Mm -hmm. So those checks and balances as an oversight uh, body are part of what we already assist with. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. And of course, all the best with all the great strategies that you have in place. Thank you so much for coming to Sunrise Live. Thank you. All Thank right. you very much. All right. all right. Well, we now take a short commercial break, but when we come back, our, our book review, stay tuned. <laughs>